Chodesh Tov. Today she are, is in blessed memory of Rabbi Meir Ben Mordechai, the Rebbe's Mashbach, and the Gabbai at 770, who passed away yesterday, the 29th of Sivan. All right, this is talks from the fifth day of Parsha Korach and the second day of Rosh Chodesh, Talmuz 5751 of the Rebbe, translated from Yiddish. The third of Talmuz is the day upon which my father-in-law, the Rebbe, the Fridika Rebbe, was freed in the year Parzos from his confinement in prison, Sperklik, Spurk, Lurk, Lurk, in Leningrad on condition that he immediately travel to exile in his refugee settlement in Kasrama for three years. At that time, they did, not know, they did not know if this is good and how this would develop for even though a refugee settlement is a slighter confinement than a prison, nonetheless, it is still an exile together with all its limitations. And the danger still remained that they could go back on their decision to free him. However, afterwards, on the 12th of Tammuz, he received in Kastrama the notification that they are freeing him and that they would give him his release certification the next day, the 13th of Tammuz. And then when he was completely freed, it was revealed how truthful the 3rd of Tammuz was the beginning of the redemption in addition to the fact that he left the prison building and was sent away to exile in a settlement of refugees, a, a hot, lighter punishment. Later on, we found out that his exile in Kastrama came instead of the punishment of the opposite of life, heaven forbid, which they had previously sentenced him to, which this would have endangered and negatively affected, heaven forbid, the whole continuation of the spreading of Torah and strengthening of Jewish religion in general, and spreading the wellsprings of Hasidus outward in particular. Instead of this, they reduced the punishment and sent him away to exile. At first, the decree was 10 years, exile in Slovakia, a place in Siberia where people were sent to exile, and afterward, they changed it to three years in Kostroma. <laughs> to the extent that this led to their complete freeing him on the 12th and 13th of Thomas, and because of this miracle, this day was established that the, whole day, that the holiday of redemption each and every year. The obvious question arises since the liberation was indeed a miracle of Hashem, which therefore there must be a phenomenon of let them give thanks to Hashem for his kindness and proclaim his wonders to the children of man. Why was it not a complete miracle in the first place that the complete redemption come about in a complete fashion all at once? Not as it actually was that it transpired in stages. First, the beginning of the redemption, the liberation from prison on the 3rd of Talmud. However, they sent him off to exile and over several days after the complete redemption of the 12th, 13th of Talmud. Furthermore, even after the 12th and 13th of Talmud, there wasn't the complete victory over the opposing side in that country, which the Rebbe referred to that country as Russia. As we saw that the different decrees upon the Jewish people in that country still remained at that time to the extent that the remedy one, that the redeemed one, need to, so to say, migrate from there and the restraints and difficulties still remain there for many years afterwards. And only now in the most recent year, more than 60 years after the redemption, in the year 5787, do we see the completion and redemption and the redemption of all the Jews from that country, as we will explain. Which certainly the fact that this event transpired, that the events transpired specifically in this order, namely that the redemption came about in stages, is by divine providence with a reason behind it. Seeing that, especially that it is regarding the imprisonment and liberation of the leader of the Jewish people and in general the redemption for all the Jewish people as the redeemed one writes, the Holy One, blessed be he, did not only redeem me on the 12th of Tammuz, writes the Fridic Rabbi, rather all those that cherish our Holy Torah, as well as all those who guard the commandments, including even those who are only referred to as Jews. So we see that the liberation for the Fridic Rabbi was not limited to the Fridic Rabbi himself, but actually 
was uh, extended to the generation and every individual Jew who either followed Jew Torah or who was, who was, who was Jewish by, by birth. On this day, the third of Talmud, many years, many generations, many, many generations ago, there was a miracle on this day. Yeshua said, the sun in Givon shall stay still, and the sun stood still until the nation avenged its enemies. Being that everything is by divine providence, <coughs> and every year the matters which took place in the past year repeat themselves the same as they took place the first time, we must say that there is certainly a connection between the two miracles which took place on the third of Talmud. The son of Givon shall stay still on the beginning of the redemption of my revered father-in-law, the Rebbe, as we shall soon explain. Now, similar to the above question regarding the third of Talmud, why it wasn't a miracle of complete redemption in the first place. Likewise, explanation is needed given the miracle of the son of Givon shall stay still. Since a miracle took place, and such a great miracle, like holding up the sun from setting, which this is of the greatest miracles which have ever taken place, to the extent that the verse says, and there never was something similar to that day, not before nor after, in order that Yeshua and the Jewish people could continue the fight and the war by means of seeing the enemy and chasing after them, for the first time the sun stood opposite Givon, and he was afraid, lest it set in the regular time, and as a result, they wouldn't have the capacity to chase after the enemy in pitch darkness of the night. He therefore said to the sun that it should not go in its regular routine and it should continue to stay opposite Givon in its place where it was. Sim seemingly, the miracle could have already been in a complete Miracle, namely, that instead of holding up the sun in order for that they could rage war in the natural way by daylight, the miracle could have requested from Hashem that they should win the war already at the start and not need the, to have such that even at night they could wage war, similar to for that all the Jewish people there was light in their settlements when it was dark for the Egyptians and the like. And it says that preceding verse that and how and God threw large stones upon them from heaven. Likewise, regarding the miracle itself of the sun stood still needs clarification as to how this miracle transpired was the change in nature only with regard to the detail which essential to achieving the goal of the miracle, namely that the light of the sun, daylight, should remain shining which for this to be accomplished is necessarily only that the cycle of the sun should, should stop and thereby shine on the earth and similarly and that the moon in the valley of Elon or the miracle was in the whole system connected to the sun's rotation, namely that the miracle also stopped the matters that are connected to the routine of the sun that causes it for the rotation of the daily orbit and as in result, the rotation of its orbits, of all the orbits, which are caused by rotation of the daily orbits, which encompassed and rotates all of them, as well as stopping the results of it and the rotation of the sun, including the rotation of the smaller orbits within the sun's orbit itself and the like. The difference between these two possibilities was... It is a miracle which shatters, breaks nature through stopping only the sun and moon alone, or a miracle which affects the nature of the sun and automatically the whole order of the nature, natural rotation of the sun, as well as the connection with the rotation of all the orbits. We may say that this correlates with two. And more specifically, this has three categories, that even at the time of the miracle, the things remained as it is normally noted that during the plague of the blood, a barrel full of water, a Jew drank water from it, while at the same time, the same water was blood for Egyptian. It is like the miracle of the splitting of the sea in which the miracle affected a change in the nature of the water that they shall be like a wall of stones. However, in essence, the water didn't change to dry land, which therefore Hashem had stopped the wind for a moment. The water would have started to flow again. The miracle affected change in the nature of things, as with the miracle of Moses, hand had leprosy as white as snow. 
and note the three ways of explaining how Moses didn't eat or drink for 40 days. And in all cases, the miracle of bringing the sun to a halt, it's possible to say that it transpired in one of the aforementioned ways and according to what will be explained further on in Ad the Ad. And the miracle brought about in the change of nature is the sun's rotation as it is possible to say that this was in the second or third aforementioned ma manner. So may we say that this correlates with the two categories of miracles. The miracle that does not change the nature of things as with the miracle of the plague of the blood that when the water turned into blood they remained water in essence, as a result, when the miracle was stopped, automatically the change of water, no blood ceased to be. And in our case, that the sun stood still was only a miracle related solely to the sun. And afterwards, the sun, afterwards, the set ordered of the sun's rotation among the rotation of other orbits returned to its normal routine. A miracle which changes the nature and essence of the thing, as was with the miracle of his hand had leprosy as white as snow, which after the miracle, the leprosy was naturally on his hand. And in order to return to its previous natural state, another miracle is needed. We may say that similar to the above inquiry is also regarding the explanation of a similar question about a phenomenon in the Parsha regarding the miracle of the staff of Aaron Blossom. In connection with the objection in regarding to the priesthood of Korach and his assembly, Hashem commanded Moses to take a staff from every tribe, twelve staffs, each person name you shall write on his staff, and the name Aaron you shall write on the staff of the Levi. And it, is, and it shall be the man that I shall choose, his staff shall blossom. And indeed so happened that Moshe placed all the sticks before Hashem in the tent of gathering. And the, const, and the next morning Moshe came to the tent of gathering, and behold, the staff of Aaron, for the tribe of Levi blossomed, indeed it flowered, budding, and produced almonds. And Moshe brought out all the staffs so that all the Jewish people could see them. Therefore Hashem said, Return the staff of Aaron before the ark to be put as a safekeeping, as a sign for the remembrance that I chose Aaron the Kohen. We must understand that since the miracle of the staff of Aaron blossomed, was a miracle to prove that the Holy One, blessed be He, chooses the priesthood of Aaron, seemingly it would suffice that completely, completely grown almonds appear on the staff, which would act as a sign for the Jewish people. In other words, seeming it would suffice for the miracle to only be regarded the detail which is pertained to the goal of the miracle that I chose Aaron the Kohen, if so, for that reason, did the miracle of the almonds need to be through budding and growing its natural stages? Indeed, it flowered, budded, and produced almonds. And Moshe showed all this to the Jewish people. And furthermore, to be put in safekeeping, meaning that not only did the staff of Aaron and the almonds remain, rather also the flowers, as the Talmud says, when the ark was put into safekeeping together with it, put in safekeeping the staff of Aaron and the almonds and its flowers. And the explanation of this, the goal and the innovation of the miracle is that although the staff is on its own, naturally has no relation to the blossoming and growing of fruits, this is only possible by the power of the Holy and Blessed Be He. Be He a miracle, nevertheless, the miracle affected the staff of Aaron as such that it was and remained not an ordinary miraculous occurrence which completely transcended nature, rather it became connected with the nature of the staff itself. And therefore the manner that it blossomed was its natural stages, however not in the limitation of time of growing fruits. Indeed the flowering meaning at it implies that it budded the budded of a fruit when the flower falls off and it produces almonds when the fruit were apparent, it was recognizable that they were almonds. And this showed that the Jewish people, that, the, that Hashem's choosing of Aaron, the Kohen, is as such that the priesthood becomes his natural virtue, which consistently remains by Aaron and his children, being, in, in, being it is inborn in them. And similarly is also the explanation of the miracle the son of Givon shall stay still, and the miracle of the Thought of Thomas, as we shall explain. May we say the explanation of this 
Our sages say every single thing that Hashem created in this world, created it only for His honor, meaning that everything in this world, although Olam world comes from a term of Elam, concealment, it cre is created in is is created in order to reveal the honor of Hashem. And this is accomplished through the service of a Jew who utilizes the matters of the world for the honor of Hashem. And the reason and certainty for this fact is alluded to the wording of the Mishnah, every single thing that Hashem created. Since Hashem proclaimed that his, in his Torah that Hashem created, that he created the thing and made known how he created it, and he created it in a way that he used so to say his powers and his time and the six days of creation to create every creation with an exclusive power, the power of creating something from nothing, which is only the power of the essence of Hashem. And especially in accordance with the Torah, inside of the Baal Shem Tov, that the creation of the universe is renewed every second, every single second, literally from absolutely nothing. This proves that Hashem desires that the creation shall have a connection to their power of the Creator Hashem to the extent that they can add, so to say, in the honor of Hashem. For it not, for if not, the question arises, why did Hashem create the world? Not a remove manner that the creation does not know that Hashem created it and does not know the manner of the creation with the ten utterances, rather, in a manner that he put it, his essential power, as well as the ten utterances, into the creation and furthermore, why did he create the world as such that he creates it in every moment anew? Seemingly, he could have created it with such a strong power that through the creation of the first time, the world would have the ability to last for 6,000 years and not necessitate being created anew every moment with the, wound, with the word of Hashem. And may we say, the reason for this, since Hashem wants every creation to feel how he how he accomplishes for him, for through him is accomplished an addition and innovation, which then the nature of the humankind that a person desires the kav. He puts forth the effort to acquire, however, the nine kavim of his friends. In other words, in addition to the fact that he fulfills what Hashem commanded him to do, he, so to say, adds a phenomenon from his own part. And a true addition when he is connected to Hashem thereby reveals the honor of the Holy One, blessed be He. For this reason, Hashem placed His power of creation into the world and in a way that He creates it continuously every moment anew. Since this connects every creation, every single moment with Hashem, in an, and that in each and every detail and in every single moment, the creation has the ability to reveal the honor of Hashem anew, namely the word of Hashem, which revered, which revived it this very moment anew. <clears throat> had the world been created in a manner that it had the power of Hashem and that it was so strong with the power which remained in it always or at least for a distant time and it is not renewed every single moment, if so, the revelation of the honor of Hashem would have been in a general manner and a one-time phenomenon. However, through the fact that every moment, every creation is created anew with the word of Hashem, we thereby reveal every moment the honor of Hashem anew. For example, through drinking water, a Jew makes a blessing that everything is created with his word and thereby reveals and the, the addition and the innovation which the water achieves since without the water he does not say the blessing. In revealing the honor of Hashem that everything is created with his word, this, the word of Hashem, which brought the water into existence anew, and that everything is created with his word, this reveals the word of Hashem in all creations. And when he drinks water on water later on and makes another bracha, he, this thereby reveals a new word of Hashem, this word which is in, then infused in him, the one making the blessing, and in the whole world, and similarly through a specific blessing who creates the fruits of the vine and the like, who reveals the new word of Hashem in all the fruits of the vine throughout the world and so forth. And similar to this with the blessing of the seeing recited over the works of the world's 
of the world's creations and the like. Blessed is he who makes the works of the world's creation. Blessed is he whose power and might fill the world, which through this, these works of the world's creations reveal the honor of Hashem for the whole entire creation that the works of the world works works of the world's creation. And note that recently we have heard and seen in this city thunder and lightning, which upon them the aforementioned blessing are recited. Similarly, we are, is also regarded the miracle of the staff of Aaron Blossom, that the miracle which took place in order to reveal that I chose Aaron the Coden affected the staff of, Aaron's, of Aaron, that it, the miracle, came about and remained connected to the nature of the staff and such that the manner of the blossoming was the nature of the stages of growing fruit which the whole gradation with the whole gradual progression of this occurs indeed it flowered budded and produced almonds and when we say in the terms of Hasidus the connection of this concept specifically with the priesthood the innovation of priesthood the priestly bracha is that it draws forth a level of godliness from above the gradation descent of the vivify, of the vivifying powers of Hashem, and therefore it is connected to swiftness. Most swift does not does His word come forth, which from this reason the sign for Hashem choosing the priesthood of Aaron is specifically with almonds, since they are the quickest fruits to become completely grown, quicker than any other fruits in twenty one days, quicker than all the other fruits, and in our case. The swiftness was not in 21 days, rather overnight, since the acceleration and swiftness signifies the flow of godliness, which transcends the graduation, gradual descent of the vivifying powers of Hashem, a flow that comes through the graduate, graduation descent, delays and waits before it is drawn forth and descends below. This is because at every descent from one heavenly chamber to the next chamber, there is a judgment as to if it's deserved of this revelation, whereas regarding the priestly bracha that flows is drawn forth swiftly through all the worlds without any interference or delay. On the other hand, the swift flow from a level above the graduation descent is drawn through all the worlds as, as emphasized by the miracle of the staff of our blossoming that together with it being a miracle that it came swiftly, also it was connected and went through the natural phase of growing fruits. And may we say and add to the above explained the connection of this with the Torah portion of Korach, in particular, this will be understood by prefacing that Korach and Chukas, the following Torah portion are both made up of the letters Hok, in statue, only the regards to Korach, a resh is added, and Hukas a sov. Uh, sov. Korach, from the tribe of Levi, had the revelation of Hok, a service, a manner of the above reason. The comprehension is explained in Hasidus that the objection of Korach was a result of his virtue. He was wise, and he saw the revelation of godliness transcending limitation, as will be in the time to come. This, his mistake in disputing the priesthood of Aaron was in respect to Rash, Rash, poverty, which shows that the drawing forth from God Almighty, thought and speech, the spiritual world does not descend to physical world through the gradation, graduation, gradual, gradational, gradational descent. Korach wanted to defy the spiritual realms and the lowest realms as symbolized in the structure of the letters Reish, which symbolizes the as, which lacks the third line of the letter He, which symbolizes the aspect of action alluding to the physical world. In other words, a Reish is like this, with a, a top line and a, and a side line, uh, but no He below the uh, left side of the Reish, like a He does, no line coming down which alludes to the action. Whereas regarding to Hukas, this is Hukas, the statute of Torah from Hok, a level transcending limitation is drawn forth into the letter Tsaf, um, the end and culmination of the 22 letters of Torah, meaning that it is drawn in the letters from Aleph until Tsaf. 
and in all these three lines, realms, the letter Sav, of the thought, speech, and action, the Torah is the Torah, godly service, and acts of kindness. Moreover, in a manner that they all become united, since at the end, the complete service, when we have the swiftness of the holiness from the flow that transcends the graduational descent, yet it comes through a graduational descent, the unification of all three lines is accomplished that from the above corresponding to the thought and speech, we come immediately and swiftly to the below action without any interruption between them, not as in the letter He, and then we reach the dot above, we reach the dot below the left line of the letter Sav, which alludes to the point of the self nullification, and in our case it is a big dot having length and width, meaning that the self nullification comes together with the ex expansion of length and width, it permeates the whole being of the person, including his understanding. And this comes at the conclusion of the letter, which represents the completeness of the point of the self nullification attained with complete service. And through this, the concept of hukas is achieved. Hukas also is an idiom of hakiko, engraved, which represents an eternal flow without change, connected with the letter Sav, as the word of our sages, the letter Sav symbolizes Tehe. You shall live. Tehe. Te you shall live, which is comprised, completeness is eternal life. According to the above explained, we may also explain the miracle that the sun and Gibbon shall stay still. The intention of this miracle was not to in, was not to entirely have the ways of nature, rather, was not entirely to leave the ways of nature, rather, as in most matters, the miracle shall assist them in winning the war, which also has to connect it at least a little bit with the ways of nature, even regarding the war, which Hashem fought for the Jewish people, there had to be a vestment in the ways of nature as well. Therefore, there wasn't a miracle that completely eliminated the war in a natural way through Yeshua. Rather, there was a miracle which assisted their waging of war. The preparation and the foundation of the victory was through the miracle of the son of Givon shall stand still. However, it's, it itself did not accomplish the victory. Once the natural light of the sun from the sun's light was shining, Yeshua and the Jewish people needed to chase after and wage war with the enemies in a natural way. And according to this, seemingly it makes more sense to say that the miracle itself of self, that the miracle itself of the sun of Givon shall stay still was in a manner which is connected to the nature of the rotation of the sun. The second possibility aforementioned in chapter two, and this brought to halt not only to the sun, moon, sun and moon, rather to all the stars and the zodiac symbols, as well as the rotation of the daily orbit in general, including all the orbits which are connected to the rotation of the sun. This also fits in well with according to the explanation of Hasidus of Yeshua's saying, the sun in Givon shall stay still, and the moon in the valley of Elon. that through bringing the rotation of the sun and the moon to a halt, they're bowing down and self-nullification to Hashem, which this is through accomplished, which this is through accomplished, that the sun shall be still from reciting song of praises to Hashem. Yeshua wanted thereby eliminate the flow of the vitality of to the nations of the world with whom the Jewish people were then waging war, who served the sun and the moon and the stars as well as the zodiac symbols. And through this elimination of their flow of vitality and winning the war was also achieved, which according to this, it makes more sense to say with the sun and Givon shall stay still, the rotation of not only the sun and moon were brought to a halt, rather also the rotation of all the other stars and zodiac symbols in the other orbits. And may we also say that similarly in also the explanation of the miracle of the redemption of the third of Thomas, together with the miracle of the third of Thomas being a miraculous phenomenon which was above nature. Nevertheless, it had an effect on the nature itself that it agreed to the transpiring 
of the miracle and particularly that this was a miracle vested in nature in the first place and especially in comparison to the middle of the staff of Aaron blossom and that the son of Givon shall stay still as known that the same people who placed the imp placed and imprisoned the redeemed one in prison they themselves remain in their full strength were forced to free him to the extent that they had no had to assist in his freeing and liberation and may we say that therefore the miracle did not come as a complete redemption as one that the same as one and the same time rather it took place in the stages stage, stages the way of many nations in the stages of the way of nations of sorry rather it took place in the stages of the way of nature in accordance with the position of the opposing side who were in their full strength and that they on their own part their nature brought them that they should come to realization that they must free him this being with nullifying the sentence of the opposing of life heaven forbid and instead they sent him away to his refugee city of Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan, and finally freeing him completely However, af even after the country remained in its full strength, including regarding their opposition to the Jewish religion, then therefore it took a long time for there to be the complete redemption of the Jewish people in that country until they themselves, in the course of the years, shall finally come to the realization of the truth and being letting, and being letting the Jewish people conduct themselves freely in a matter of Judaism there, as well as letting the Jewish people leave that country and even assisting them to do so. Including in these days, literally, the discussion and desire of many people in that country to change the name of the city, Leningrad, the place of imprisonment, the name which they gave it after their leader, back, in the back to the name of Petersburg. The name of the city, the time of the imprisonment and liberation of the Alter Rebbe, the name given by the Tsar, and regarding itself, the name given by the Tsar, who represents the complete opposite of the communist viewpoint when they built the city, and even though also under the Tsarist rule there were difficulties for Judaism, yet this does not come close to how it was through those that arrested and imprisoned the imprisoned and rede redeemed one. And may we say that in the discussion and desire to change back the name of the city from Leningrad to Petersburg, we may see more clearly the continuous effect of the redemption of the 12th and 13th of Talmud, the general redemption for us all the Jewish nation and triumph over all whom opposed them in general and especially in that country. We may also connect that with the month of redemption, the month of Tammuz, the fourth month of the Jewish year, which comes after and by the power of the third month, similar to the letter Gimel and Dalit in Acronyms of Gomel Dalim, provided for the needy, the fl and the flows provides for Gimel, third month, the, da the month of the giving of the Torah into Dalit, the fourth month, the month of continuation and the ending of the imprisonment, similar to the concept of the needy, in the manner that this, the aspect of the needy, is transformed into the month of redemption. And may we say that this idea is alluded to the form of the letter Dalit, although the letter Dalit and the letter Resh are similar in the fact that they both represent the concept of poverty. Dalit, an idiom of Dalas, poverty, as well as the acronym of Dalim and Rash, an idiom of Rash, impoverished, and Rash has nothing. The and both are made up of two lines, one above, widthwise, and the other longwise, from above to below. Yet there is a fundamental difference between them. The letter Dalit has a dot, a yud, at the and at its back, which connects the two lines, which is not so for the letter Rash. Hmm. One of the explanations of this analysis is the dot symbolizes the concept of self-nullification, the point of Judaism, which is present in its entirety in every Jew, even when he is in a sense of the back, not on the front side of the realm of holiness. As our sages say, even when one sin, he is still a Jew, 
since the point of Judaism transcends all aspects of concealment, the higher than the level of the gradation descent and the essential point of Yehida of the soul which connects the Jew with the Holy One above. And the dot, self-nullification, at the back of the Dalit shows that the poverty shows that the poverty and neediness of the Dalit is in self-nullification of the realms of holiness, which connects them with the highest levels, Dalit Dalis, also an idiom Dalisani, exalted, and the similar to which the virtue of the prayer of the poor man, which reaches the level that before Hashem he pours out his prayers, whereas the letter Resh, which doesn't have the dot of nullification at all, the needy, needless neediness is due to the fact that it has no connection to holiness at all. And according to this, we can also explain the difference between the two lines of Resh and the two lines of Dalit and the two lines wide width and lengthwise, including all the levels of the gradational descent, which are divided upon in general into the categories of upper realms and the lower realms within the length. The line above with widthwise represents complete broad abundance. However, on the upper level, similar to quality and line Lengthwise represents drawing down from above to below to the lower levels. The ultimate godly service is that one has both virtues in unison and the point of self-nullification, and as it is drawn and permeates the gradual descent as well as represented by the two lines, when one has both aspects of above and below, however, the point of self-nullification of the essence of the soul is lacking then eventually the unification of these lines becomes different di becomes until there is also a deficiency in the completeness of the two lines themselves and not only in their unification until the separation between them could bring a situation of rash poverty and the opposite of holiness similar to how it was regarding korach the letters of hok Resh, as explained in chapter 5, however, when the self-nullification of the essence of Judaism is present, the dot behind the Dalit, which is outside and higher than the two lines, more than the advantage of the L shape, and together with the both lines, as well as with the letter Dalit, one then has the completeness of the service of both the lines and the complete connection between them which this is the content of the fourth month and the month of redemption, the redemption of the third and twelfth and thirteenth of Talmud, that the miracle which is above nature, similar to the dot, shall be drawn forth and transform the nature of the world. The two lines of length and width included that even reaches the state of rash, poverty of the opposite side, evil, the inclination of the imprisonment through those that oppose holiness, and transform this as well, and on the contrary, specifically through the descent of the state of suffering, is revealed how I am with him in his suffering, which this refers to his essence, blessed be he, which is above the entire framework of the graduational, <coughs> gradational descent <coughs> of above and below, and therefore even though Hashem is above, of which there is no higher than him, and the suffering in its physical world below, of which there is no lower than it, there is a concept of I am with him in his suffering, opposite of the regular order of the gradational descent and above and below, namely that even in this negative state, state the concept of back, the yud, the essence of Judaism is revealed to the extent that this is drawn and connects also and above and below of the gradational descent. From the above spoken, there are several lessons in general service of man, both regarding oneself as well as in regards to his service in the world, and both in matters of Torah and concealment, as well as the mundane matters concerning the manner in which the person attains his livelihood, also and especially in connection with the redemption of the third of Talmud, regarding the service of spreading Torah, Judaism, and disseminating of the wellsprings of Chassidus outward, especially that we have 
the command and the staff of Aaron must be put in safe keeping to be safeguarded for a sign that I chose Aaron the Kohen. When the ark was being was put in safe keeping, it was put in safe keeping. The staff of Aaron together with its almonds and flowers, and it understood that there is an eternal lesson from th this from this for all generations and every Jew, in part from the kingdom of priests, Kohanim Gadolim, grand priests, as the Ram Ram rules, that not only the tribe of Levi alone, rather each and every person that his spirit bequeath him to complete dedication dedicate to completely dedicate himself to the service of Hashem. Behold, he is sanctified with the holiness of the Holy of Holies, of which only a grand priest can enter. It is also understood that every Jew must have something similar to the phenomena of the staff of Aaron Bosom. Indeed it flowered, budded, and produced almonds. The lesson from this in the general service of Hashem, even though the service of a Jew must be through acceptance of the yoke, which is above reason and a comprehension, and in a manner of swiftness, which is above confines and limitations with all your might, and specifically this reaches at the beyond limits of above, may we say that through this con continues the ultimate service and in the no and in the known terminology we had been commanded to chop wood we would do it therefore we have learned the lesson from the staff of iron blossom that followed the foundation of acceptance of the yoke the essential point which transcends confines and limitations it can and must afterwards spread out in all its inner powers, feelings, until it, until in his entire existence and nature to the extent that will produce fruit. Indeed, it flowered, budded, and produced almonds, and in such a manner that the nature of nature and existence itself became swift, a swift nature, and above confines and limitations, namely that everything he does with his natural power is with the utmost swiftness and swiftness of holiness. Similar, we are also we also have the lesson of the service of a Jew in permitted matters, and especially in regard to one's material livelihood. First and foremost, we learn from the staff of Aaron blossom, which remains for safeguarding. Similar to the lesson we learn from the flask of manna, which also remained for a safeguarding for all generations. That when the Jewish people reasoned to Yirmiyahu who requested of them, why are you not occupying yourselves in Torah study? Shall we place aside our work and occupy ourselves in Torah study from where we were, from where we will get our livelihood? Your, your Miyahu took out a flask of manna and told, and told them, see, with this your ancestors attained their livelihood. The island of the present has many emissaries to prepare sustenance for those that fear him. Similarly, we have the lesson from the staff of Aaron Blossom that almonds of physical food are produced in a miraculous fashion and swiftly. And similarly, in regarding to, in regard, is regarded the livelihood of a Jew. On the other hand, it is stated that Hashem, your God, shall bless you in all that you do, meaning that the flow of material livelihood is accomplished through the natural process of growing almonds. And it blossomed, budded, and produced almonds, which comes through conducting business faithfully, plowing and planting in the limitation of nature in the world, permeated with the belief in Hashem that one believes in he who, he who enlivens the world and plants. And this because becomes the vessel for revealing and the blessings of Hashem for a livelihood in a miraculous manner. However, such a miracle which vests itself in the nature of the world that we see how the nature of the world and the nations of the world themselves assist in providing of the livelihood of the Jews. As we see this, especially in the recent generations in which Hashem blessed the Jewish people, that they shall receive their livelihood with less excursion, with peace of the soul, and with, and as well as tranquility of the body, more than it was in previous generations through the fact that the world itself assists in this. From this we also have a special lesson in the service and spreading the wellsprings outward, which has broadened reach 
an incomparable range through and after the redemption of the third, third and twelfth and thirteenth of Thomas, when we say that these three aspects of spread your wellsprings outwork are similar to the three aspects of the letter Dalit, spread the essential point of battle, self nullification, to your wellsprings, the line above which true quality, and three outward, the line lengthwise, which represents the flow from above to below meaning first and foremost the Jew must be in a state of spread forth. His existence must be composed of spread forth, an existence which spreads godliness and in a manner which is above confines and limitations, spreads with no limits, even before we tell him what, his, what specifically he must spread your will springs and where he must spread them outward, and he must know that immediately upon awakening in the morning, even before he does the service in its details, he is an existence of your spreading forth. I am thankful before you, Modani, how grateful I how great how great I was created to serve my master. Um, does not mean that he is in existence for himself, and this existence occurred in spreading forth serving my master. Rather, his whole existence is spreading forth. And this is known saying, go over it in the first place, right at the start, as he stands over and above. Afterwards, he must draw into details your wellsprings. He must spread specifically the wellsprings of Torah, which purify even with a droplet on even on a higher level than the level of the bodies of water that water lower than it. Mik, the mikvah water, which can only purify when it's 40 sa, And he must spread them outward beginning with the outermost within himself, namely, that it shall spread forth from his essential point of faith and acceptance of the yoke into his intellectual attributes and inner powers until in, in outward, in its simple sense, outside the four cubits of holiness of Yeshiva, Torah, Academy, Synagogue, the Hall of Torah study, including Hazak, Hatsuka outside with a hay at the end, which includes outward, of which there is no lower outward than it. Similar to the known story of a chassid that was going to the streets in that country, disregarding any limitations as the nature of the true chassid, in a time that this was dangerous, a policeman stopped him and asked him, Where are you going? He answered, Self-nullification goes. He answered what was simply to regard him that his whole existence is butthole and the entirety of butthole goes. Together with this, he answered to him specifically in Russian since his butthole was also drawn into the setting and language of the place and the nature of existence of Russia, similar to the concept of where you go to a town, act in accordance with its customs as such that the nature of the language of the place itself says and understands that butthole goes. However, there can still be a question as to ask even when I do my service completely to the extent that I reach a level that my existence is spread, the ultimate self-nullification, what does it help when you are a minority among the other nations and in the world around him there are 70 nations which are an immense number in, quali in quantity in comparison to the one sheep. In other words, what will the world and the nations say about a Jew doing his service of spreading the wellsprings outward and especially enhancing the true and complete redemption? Seemingly, they don't understand what this means. It is indeed a great and lofty service. However, seemingly, we must take the world into account, he objects. The answer to this is the world is already prepared, over and done with, when a Jew does his service of spreading your wellsprings outward and especially enhancing the true and complete redemption done as it should be in a manner of the above confines and limitations and along with this is the is as it is clothed in the vessels of the vestment of nature he will see how the world the nature of the world and the nation of the world assist him in his service even in aforeformed times when there were restraints and difficulties the nature of a hasid was that he personifies and automatically he said battle goes and how much more so now, when quite a few of these restraints and difficulties are no more, as spoken above, that even in that country there have come about great changes for the good, and on the contrary, in the world itself we see miracles and wonders which are taking place, especially in recent years. The year of Nisan miracles, 57-50-1990, and the year I shall show them wonders, 57-51-1991, the time has already come that although there must be a phenomenon 
of above confines and limitations, miracles and wonders, including the miracles and wonders of the true complete redemption. Nonetheless, it also permeates the nature of the world, namely the world itself assists in the developing of the redemption, just like the miracle of the staff of our and blossom, which affected the nature of the staff as such that there should be a growing of fruit in the natural way, similar to how it was in regard to the exodus of Egypt, which just as the days you left Egypt, I shall show them wonders in the ultimate redemption, then in addition to the miracles that took place then, there was the phenomenon of that they emptied Egypt of its wealth in a manner that although it began in a meticulous way, it however led and brought about the Egyptians themselves assisted the Jewish people in this and even gave them much more than they asked. How much more so in the true and complete redemption when there will be wonders and even comparison to the one where there will be wonders even in comparison to the wonders of the exile of exodus of Egypt in comparison to them the wonders of Egypt will be deemed natural. It will also be as such that the world and nature of the world itself will assist in it. Regarding action coming from the third of Talmuz to and the, into the days of the redemption of the twelfth and thirteenth of Talmuz and every Shana which includes all the Shinoye variation of times of the year it appreciates an additional elevation every person must add with advanced vigor and great strength in all pursuits of spreading Torah and Judaism as well as disseminating the wellsprings outward and in a swift manner knowing that the world itself will assist a Jew in his service especially presently in the summer time when children go to summer camps we must put an effort that Jewish children go to summer camps that are a kosher education pure befitting holiness, and that those who are occupied in educating the children must see to truly utilize the summer time in the best way, and with the utmost swiftness, utilizing free moments to add both oneself and for the child, children in all matters of Judaism with liveliness and joy, and from one matter to the next, in accordance with the customs of some to say, per care of those, Throughout the Shabbos of the summer, after the Mincha prayer, it is appropriate at that time to arouse another time regarding, and especially that this Shabbos is the tenth time we are saying Perkei Avos this year, the six weeks between Pesach and Shavuos, and four weeks after Shavuos until this Shabbos, and that it is recommended, <coughs> being that it is part of oral Torah, that we should learn at least one mission in depth. And similarly, we should arouse regarding a good custom in many places to re repeat a Hasidic discourse after Mincha prayer on Shabbos and may be the will of Hashem that it should be in a manner of hukas that we will soon read from the Torah now as the Mincha prayer. <coughs> At the Mincha prayer. Namely, that it should overtake the listeners and bring about them in, ch in change for the good, including <coughs> in a manner of hakakal meaning that it is engraved in them, and literally, immediately, that they should find it, <coughs> bring the true and complete redemption, along with the <coughs> sacrificing of the tenth red heifer, which will be done by King Mashiach, speedily shall he reveal the main, so that shall, shall be the will of Hashem, <coughs> and with our youth and with our elderly and with our sons and with our daughters and all the Jewish people together to the Holy Land into Jerusalem, the Holy Land and then into the third Semigdash as is mentioned literally, immediately Chodesh Tov